Hey, welcome back. It's Nolan Mathias from Marty360. And one of the things I'm most passionate about in this industry is being the most open and honest and transparent mortgage brokerage that we can possibly be. That's why we took the steps a few years ago of becoming the first B Corp certified mortgage corporation in North America. That is a certification around transparency, accountability, and social and environmental impact. And that is the reason today why I want to discuss how mortgage brokers are paid, how much they make, and what that means to you when you go to get a mortgage, specifically what it means for the interest rate that you pay. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about a race to 10,000 subscribers where one lucky winner is going to win their mortgage or rent payment for a month just for subscribing to this channel. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It's free and it's definitely worth it. The definitive guide on how to manage your credit product and elite price in that order. It's never been more important to get your mortgage right. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's answer that question. How much do mortgage brokers make? Because this is a question that in certain provinces, a mortgage broker has to answer. In certain provinces, you don't have to answer it. But in a lot of cases, it is something that is really misunderstood. And quite frankly, you can go and you can Google the information. How much does a mortgage broker make in Canada? You'll find a whole bunch of different articles. But what I want to do is set the record straight and tell you exactly how the pay structure for a mortgage broker works and what that means to you when it comes to getting your interest rate. Because how much a mortgage broker makes actually has a lot to do with how much you end up paying for your mortgage. So let's get into it. Let's have that conversation. And let's start by taking a look at the public data, the information that we find on Google when it comes to how much a mortgage broker makes in Canada. So this is from indeed.ca. This is the number one job site in Canada. You can go into Indeed and you can look up any sort of profession and see what the typical incomes are. And as you can see, the average mortgage broker makes about $81,000 in Canada, according to Indeed. Now that may seem like a lot of money, but it isn't the full story. And I'll get to that in a minute. But for the most part, if you're considering a career in mortgages, $81,000 a year seems pretty good. Depending on where you are in the country, you may make more or less. And a lot of that depends largely on the size of the mortgage. But $81,000 isn't your actual take home pay. So let's break this out and discuss exactly how much mortgage brokers actually make, how much actually ends up in their pocket at the end of the day, and how much they make on an average transaction that you would do. So let's take a look here. I'm gonna to switch to this screen and we're gonna start by going through the typical mortgage. Now, average mortgage amount in Canada is about $325,000. And the average commission, what most lenders pay is about 1%, which makes the average commission that a mortgage broker makes from doing a transaction, the revenue that they generate, the gross commission, $3,250. Now that may seem like a lot, but that isn't the full amount that a mortgage broker is going to get to take home because there's a lot of expenses that go along with being a mortgage broker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two examples of how mortgage brokers would get paid. One for a brand new agent or a single agent that doesn't have a team and one for a small brokerage or a team brokerage like ours that does have a team. So let's start with the new mortgage broker. And the first thing that you need to understand about a mortgage broker is that their biggest expense is typically going to be marketing. Without marketing, without networking, without going out and meeting people and talking to people, there basically is no business. So a typical mortgage broker will spend at least 25% of their income on marketing. And it actually doesn't matter the size of the mortgage broker, whether they do a small amount or a large amount, most put about 25% of their revenues into marketing. And that's pretty much what we've found across the industry. Now, obviously there are different types of models out there. This isn't true for everybody. There are models that spend less on marketing. There are models that spend more on marketing, but this is just the general guideline, the average mortgage broker in Canada. So by the way, the mortgage brokers who are watching this, cause that will inevitably happen, understand that this is average, not everybody. And your situation is always going to be different than other people's. So keep that in mind when you hit the comment section. Now, the next major cost for a mortgage broker is their brokerage fees and other expenses. So the brokerage fees will typically be anywhere between five and 25%. And then they'll have other expenses like legal fees for setting up their corporation. They'll have licensing fees. They'll have mar uh, fees with respect to accounting and so on and so forth. And that basically takes up another 25%, which is 
half of their income gone between marketing and brokerage fees and expenses right out of the gate. So that $81,000 immediately goes down to $40,000. So after marketing expenses and business expenses and brokerage fees, that leaves about half of their income left. And 12.5% of that or 25% of what's left over is typically going to go towards taxes. We can't avoid that. All of us pay taxes. Mortgage brokers are no different, which leaves about 37.5% of the income that they've generated actually going into their pockets at the end of the year. So think about that from the perspective of a mortgage broker who is earning $82,000 a year or $81,000 a year, according to Indeed, the amount that they're actually putting in their pockets is about 26 to $28,000 a year, which puts them into the income bracket of somebody who is making maybe 50 or $60,000 a year. Not a very significant source of income when you put it in the grand scheme of things. So that perception that mortgage brokers make a ton of money, it actually isn't really true. To put this in perspective, a mortgage broker who generates $81,000 in gross commission per year is gonna do about 25 mortgages. Those 25 mortgages are gonna be extremely hard to find because everyone has a bank, everyone has a realtor who's recommending a mortgage broker and finding those 25 clients is actually the majority of the job. Mortgage brokers, at least the ones who know what they're doing and the ones who make it, typically spend about 60 to 70 percent of their time trying to find deals, build relationships, and basically get the opportunity to do a deal. And then only about 30 to 40 percent of their time actually working on deals and making the actual income. So even though 25 deals doesn't seem like a lot of deals to do, it actually takes a lot of effort to get to the point where you've actually got the ability to do 25 deals in a year. Now, one thing that I want to note at this point is that when you ask a mortgage broker to get you a lower rate, typically what you're asking for is not for them to go to the bank and negotiate you a lower rate. What you're asking them for is for them to reduce their commission in order for, to get you a lower rate. Because what doesn't happen is I can't go to a lender like First National or Scotiabank and say, hey, this is a really great client and I really love them, so you should give them an extra 0.1% off. If I give a client an extra 0.1% off, so basically take their rate from 1.64 to 1.54, the way that I do that is by cutting my commission in half. And for Mortgage360, for our company, we have a policy where we don't do that. And the reason why is because it's simply not fair and honest to everybody. If I do it for one person, I need to do it for everyone. And what we don't want is we don't ever want a client finding out that we gave somebody a better deal than we gave them and went above and beyond for somebody, but not for somebody else. Everyone at Mortgage360 is treated equally. But when you ask for a mortgage broker to get you that 0.1% off and when they give it to you, one is they're doing something that they wouldn't necessarily do for everybody. And two is you're effectively asking them to decrease their income by half. So if your employer came to you and said, hey, can you do your job for half the price? What would you say to them? In most cases, the answer would be absolutely not, right? In fact, I think in almost all cases, the answer would be absolutely not. Well, when you're asking a mortgage broker to get you that slightly lower interest rate or get that 0.1% off, which is the price of a cup of coffee every week, you're asking that to, that mortgage broker to basically take a 50% reduction in their income, which can be the difference between them making a mortgage payment and not making a mortgage payment. So keep that in mind when you're negotiating with your mortgage broker. Now let's discuss a more established broker with a team, which is something like what Mortgage 360 would look like. And you'll notice that the marketing cost is still about the same. We're still spending about 25% on marketing. And when we start to get bigger and start to grow, our brokerage fees and our expenses start to go down. So maybe we get a better split from our brokerage because we're doing more volume and maybe we are just getting some economies of scale because we're growing more. The things like the legal costs and the accounting costs stay the same while our incomes grow. But then there's this added cost because once you get to doing about 100 mortgages a year, which is about $250,000 in gross revenue, you start to need help. Doing more than that becomes really, really difficult. There are people out there that are freaks of nature that can do more than 100 transactions on their own in a year, but most people will need an assistant at this point, which usually ends up costing about 25% of the revenue. Now, the hope is when a mortgage broker gets an assistant that they'll be able to grow their revenue more than what the cost of that assistant was, but in almost every case, you're going to end up giving a pretty large proportion of your income to that assistant if you are to find a good one that's full-time that is actually going to be able to do the job. So then after that, we've got about 35% of our gross revenue left. 7.5% of that is going to go to taxes or about 25% of the net revenue that we have. And then the rest is ours to keep. Now, you have to start to grow and get pretty big before it starts to make a ton of sense to have a ton of employees and to have a big brokerage. It's really, really difficult. So if you were to take a brokerage that makes a half a million dollars in gross revenue at the end of the year, 
Well, the owner of that brokerage is still only taking home about $125,000 a year, which isn't lawyer money, it isn't doctor money. You know, it's maybe the type of money that an engineer would make or a professional would make, but it's only a little bit more or about 50% more than what the average mortgage broker makes. Now, obviously as a team or a broker grows and gets to another level of 750,000 or a million dollars, yes, the profits start to go up, but rarely does a mortgage broker exceed the income of a really good lawyer or a really good doctor. Yes, there's an opportunity to provide a ton of value out there, the opportunity to do a ton of mortgages and make a really, really, really good income, but it is definitely a lot harder than it looks and getting those first 25 mortgages is really, really hard. There's almost a 75 to an 80% failure rate in this industry and getting to that 100 deal, 200 deal, 300 deal a year mark is really, really difficult, especially if you've never been taught how to deliver the value, have that conversation about that, what that 0.1 or 0.2% really means to that client and end up working for half the income and only working for 12 or $15,000 a year. So do me a favor and do our industry a favor. Instead of asking for that 0.1 or that 0.2% off, instead of asking for your mortgage broker to cut their income in half, instead ask them to find you the best mortgage for the best price, the one that allows you to have the flexibility to save the money down the road. Because if you do, what that means is that you will be making sure that your mortgage broker is being paid properly, but you will also be making sure that you have the flexibility to save money. And ultimately, so your mortgage broker can help you save money in the future just by making sure that you have the right product. So if you found this video useful, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about our race to 10,000 subscribers where one lucky person is going to win their payment for a month. All you have to do is click that subscribe button. It's free and it's definitely worth it. We'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Welcome.